under the IRS one, I actually listed more because I want to cover more for the small business. So IRS has the income tax audit and also IRS do payroll tax audit. You know, they want to know whether you hire contractors or you are actually um, have a payroll going on. And the IRS also do what we call the cash deposit audit. And I don't know whether you know that every time you go to bank to deposit cash from your business, and if you don't have a good reason, let's say if you are in, um, in community CPA kind of business, obviously you don't deal with a lot of cash. People pay you through online payment. People pay us through checks. So I have, we don't have experience that people carrying cash over, but if you're a general grocery store, you might see more cash coming in, right? So with the nature of the business IRS, actually when you set up the bank with the, with your bank, the bank knows what you are doing. The bank is there helping IRS to catch frauds and the cash money laundering uh, possibilities. So they are actually sending IRS a form called 8300 as a it's a form they put in. It's a currency transaction report, CTC, CTR. So this CTR is sending into IRS without you knowing it, okay? So if you are business, IRS don't really take much notice to your report because they know you always get cash. But if you are individual and you went to deposit 2,000 today, 5,000 tomorrow, and the next day you deposit 3,000, and they know that it's already reaching 10,000 in a very short time, then you will be reported. And the worst of all, when they reported you like that, they're actually uh, maybe thinking uh, you are uh, intentionally fraudulent, not so much of you are just uh, accidentally depositing cash for the time being. So those are the audit the IRS would do. And then of course, other than IRS audit, you also have the federal government uh, labor, Department of Labor. That's another audit is very popular with small business. If you are running, say if you're running a restaurant, uh, um, and the uh, the workers you have, um, if you didn't pay them overtime, or if they report you saying that, well, you know, they don't like you, and as a business owner, and they can go to call Department of Labor, tell them that, you know, you don't pay their overtime, even though you do pay, but you are already dragged through the mud, and you have to spend time to prove that you have done it right. And the other one audit that you often will see is um, with federal government audit, you have this labor side of audit, you have income tax audit, but at the state level, they do the same thing. The state, like Minnesota and Iowa, the, the, the Department of Revenue could audit you for income tax, right? And the workforce could come in, the Iowa workforce could come in to audit you for worker compensation. Then Minnesota deed could come in to audit you for contract labor and employee to see whether you have uh, classified them properly. So all of these things are coming in, becoming small business audit. And then what here, what we're trying to focus on is, we're trying to focus on IRS federal audit. And I know you might say that, well, there's so many audit going on. And if I just know things about IRS, does that help me? Does that really help me to sort of prevent everything else? The answer is yes. Because after all, the government regulations are all kind of came out with reference to each other. So the state look at how IRS does it. IRS look at how other agency doing it and the treasury regulate them. So there's a there's a whole uh, a whole set of regulation and um, you know understandings, guidelines for the people to come in to audit you. So their audit method and your right and your uh, opportunity to to work with them at different level is all similar. So um, it is very useful to understand how IRS is conducting uh, the audit, why it, you get triggered audit, all of that information is useful. And in today's environment, 
And obviously, and we are in the COVID-19 time, as a small business, I am not surprised that you tell me you got some government money. And I probably do not know any small business who did not get some government money one way or another. Some got more, some got less, but you know, you know, your business is trenched with government money. And that by itself is a audit trigger because you are using government money. So the government obviously have right to come to you and to have a compliance audit on you. So these are all common audit and you will see in the field as a small business, uh, don't get overwhelmed, knowledge is power. Once you know about what can become a compliance audit and you knew to do something already at the, on the daily basis to prevent that to happen or even if it happens and you can sleep, you know that you are just fine. Okay. And we have clients gone through audit, no change because they have done great job. We have just recently uh, finished a audit for a Hispanic owned uh, restaurant and they came out 100% no change. So that tells you it's possible. Okay. And now let's look at my next slide. Um, my next slide is, and where are the common triggers for audit? So now we know what are the audit uh, in there. So let's list a couple of triggers for you. And so number one is data mismatch under IRS. So what, what do I mean? So let's say, let's say you worked for five employers in one year, and you got four W-2s and you prepared your tax return, but you missed one W-2. Not because you just want to miss it, because you forgot, because you only worked for that employer for like five days, right? Data mismatch just means that what you give to IRS to file your tax return is not the same with what IRS know about you. So that is number one trigger. Okay, your number two trigger is a data deviation score. So IRS big machine knows that what is a reasonable range for a claim. For example, for example, you are a CPA firm business and then you happen to have a large cost of goods sold and you're not even manufacturing company. Why do you have cost, cost of goods sold to begin with? And that is a trigger. So IRS knows this is unreasonable for you to have that. And if you have a large, uh, huge compensation on contract labor and a small number on salary, that is also a trigger because you are a CPA firm. Why are you having so big of a contract labor and you, aren't you hire professional employees? So those are the, those are the triggers. So if you are in the construction business and other than seeing your, um, you know, your revenue 3.5 million sales, looking at your salary, $100,000. And then look at your cost of good, uh, look at your contract labor. Boy, that's 1.2 million. You think the IRS is not going to come to you and they say hello? And why are you having such a discrepancy? Right? So these are triggers and the data deviation. IRS has data and the cash deposit I mentioned. And if they see you are a law firm. And you regularly deposit 5,000, 2,000, 3,000. Boy, you just have too much cash going on. And they start to wonder whether you provide professional service uh, for law service or whether you are uh, laundering money there for your clients. So that is another trigger for IRS. And a lot of grocery store owners they are doing money transfer for their client at the grocery. So the treasury have an audit for that, 
for that compliant audit for that specifically. So the regulations is laid out really clear. Actually, we have clients, uh, when they started working on this type of business, they coming in to have us go through the compliance uh, regulations with them and to set up internal control so you are all good and sound. I mean, these auditors come around, if they know you are doing the right job, they're really good. They, they are in, they are out, it's a clean audit. And of course, doesn't matter how good you are and no matter what you do. And uh, whistleblowers is always a reason for you to be audited. That's a trigger because there are times people um, get mad for different reason or you happen to be somebody's competitor and they don't have any way to defeat you. They think the government would and then they will report you to the authorities and uh, hoping that you will be scrutinized. Hopefully you were doing wrong. You will be caught and so you know situation happens and other triggers related to IRS is that people reporting net income versus gross. For example, if you are if you are selling things on Amazon and Amazon report comes out already give you a net profit because they take your total sales, they they take away all the commissions, they got that smaller number for you and you take the smaller number put on your tax return and say well that's my income of course you are not wrong but you are reporting something irs do not see irs see the total sales so you want to make sure that you um you report the gross sales not the net and excessive home office deduction is also a trigger for IRS. They had that trigger, they had that red flags in the system. I know with COVID-19, with the internet, that is already becoming very uh, loosened. And it's not like back in 1998, home office is just a screaming alarm, but now home office is not so, but, but if you put so much of home office expense in there, and you also have another office, and then obviously you would you would have um, IRS would look at you and thinking that's excessive home office deduction, and wrong accounting method is also another really good one. You know how sometimes you flip your tax pages, you see something like cash method, accrual method, other method. And there is one got checked out, right? Normally it's cash. And you always wonder what does that do? And that do a lot. So some some companies, they don't understand the difference. So they print their financial, uh, financial statement on cash, but on the tax return, they do it accrual. So accounting, state, uh, accounting method mismatch is a very bad practice and I don't blame business owners because a lot of you don't know but your tax preparers and your CPAs really should know if they don't even know that I, just let them go and you need to come to community CPA okay and the missing time missing tax deadlines is also another one if you miss deadlines you don't file extension and that is by itself is a trigger IRS have a very good tally list of people who doesn't file their taxes on time and so a lot of these are really uh really common knowledge right and you felt like what i said and you also you all understand but these are triggers when you work with professionals and that's their job to make sure that they look at your financial statement they go no that number is too big it, it sh it's not reasonable did you misclassify it should that be there so those are the good questions for um for uh for your accountant to ask you so as a business owner and you can think about it and come up with a solution you know one thing i always brag about ourselves um i don't you know english is my second language so i'm not really good at uh, running around with words so i come to the point all the time for example if you uh, if you have a inventory in your business and you know that is a question the every tax preparer would ask you what's your ending inventory right they ask you and you will sit there thinking well i don't really know but i you know 
if I just think of it, it could be probably between 2,000 to 10,000. I don't really know, but it is in between, okay? And ultimately, in your deep in your mind, you want to know, if I tell you 2,000, is that increasing my tax liability? Do I pay more taxes if I say 2,000? Or do I pay more taxes if I say 10,000? And I know that's deep in your mind, that's really the end of it because you're here to report taxes. You have a right to only pay what you need to pay. So you're not there to pay tips, okay? So you want to know which works for you because then you know that when you, you know, even if it is estimated number, you may want to get into more accurate number, but still you have this range. So do you go small or you go higher? So our firm, very simple. We tell you that the lower the inventory you have, then the lower the taxes you pay. The higher of the inventory you have, the higher of the taxes you pay. And sure, I can explain to you in the accounting terms, but isn't that simple to remember? You just remember that, right? So that's what we tell our client. We go straight to the end. We don't go from A, B, C, D to the Z. We just tell you from A to Z, and that's what that is. Sure, we got through the other alphabets, but that is not really meaningful to give you a cunning class and you are a business owner and you're so smart in doing your own business why do you care to know why do i say that you just need to remember that am i right so those are the things when we work with you we tell you and then that way you can go back to check your inventory now you know it is not good to estimate your inventory like that it is better to calculate it so you can give me a good number even if you pay more taxes you're set you're like i should right so that's the that's the meaning behind getting a professional help and DOL audit earlier we talked about from Department of Labor, most of them are triggered by whistleblower. Most of them are your employees, ex-employees or existing employees. They just, they, they are not happy because you didn't pay them enough. Maybe you didn't pay them their overtime or what happened. Maybe you were even paying them cash under the table and no records. So they only got a little check. Now they can document the hours they worked and the little check you paid, boy, you owe a lot of money. And this is something that, you know, when we work with our business owners, we protect your interests. You do not want to do that. And I absolutely tell you, do not do that. I know you're going to tell me that, oh, Ying, if I don't do that, you know, I would never get, I would never get anybody to work for me. They're all like that. And all of them, they don't want to, they don't want me to pay them. And for this reason, that reason. And you know what? That is really not them, is you. Because in business, if you work it right, you attract the right employees to come to you. And if you're always doing it wrong way, you attract wrong people to work for you. And that is so true. I know it is not a one day solution, but it is a five year solution. It is definitely a 10 year solution. If you have a small business, you want to run that and you want to leave a legacy for your children and you want the business to one day become a business that carries name on and on on earth. Yeah, you want to do it right. And those people who do that to you, they're not good employee. And because they know how to work the system, they know how to report you as well. That is just come with it, okay? And so DOL audit is normally triggered by um, whistleblowers. And the state audit is typically also handled, is also triggered by the whistleblowers or maybe you're, you're late in filing sales tax and or maybe uh, some auditors went over to your place had a, had a lunch and with a, you know with the impression that you guys are not reporting money properly and all of these because it's a state it's almost like it's your hometown and you know people know you and you think that you you are a good business you think that the, the auditors don't come to you of course they do so they come to you 
and they would want to they would want to make sure that you are doing it right and i had a business i had a chinese restaurant in a small town iowa and it got uh steam operated by the government so they went in whatever they did so they raided their home and um discovered uh their record of business the business owner in the end uh, by the time I know the owner, the IRS already raided him twice. And so he actually in jail for four years because of whatever he did on the revenue side. So it is not a joke. And I see, I see that happens. So when it's not happened to you, you don't think about it. It's just like a COVID-19. When it is not affecting people, you know, nobody around you die and you don't think that you need to wear face masks to go out. And the reality is there are, you know, there are people dying every day and you see the number. If you know someone who works in the hospital, it will give you a better picture. And if you have a friend who works in, in the mortuary, in the, in the funeral home, Ah, you will get a taste of it and then you can ask them. So it's really about, you don't know that means it's not there, okay? You don't know, it's just that you could be ignorant and not to do anything and not to wear a mask and, you know, pretend COVID doesn't exist. But the reality is that not only is it exist, when you get it and you may not be able to survive. So that's, that's just like audit. And of course, now we got one more trigger for audit because of the government money in the business. So when you use government money, when government gave you money for free, and you can expect that you will be audited because that is what they want to make sure that the money they give you for free and it is actually being used for good purpose. So when I, I, I said so many of these things to um, almost like I'm scaring you right now. No, I am trying to tell you that that's the reality. And then we go on with this seminar. We're going to talk about how to avoid it. 100% avoid it. And that is never going to happen. And the only way to 100% avoid audit and for you, uh, for your 1040, not even your estate, is if you die, right? If you die and you have loans that you own to other people, and if it is not guaranteed by anything you have, then that's gone. But otherwise, there is no guarantee for anything 100%. So audit is not, never can be 100% avoided, but with good practice, and yes, you can. We have too many clients. We really don't have a handful of clients who are actually being audited. Most of our clients, we would not allow that to happen. We will take steps already. Why are you being audited? Oh yeah, I have one client being audited because I was telling him to do certain things he doesn't listen. And he has his wife working everything for him and he loves his wife. So that love spilled over to become a business trust and it doesn't know that the wife doesn't do it right. And so he think is right. So he got audited. Then we discovered the whole book is wrong. Then of course the tax is wrong. And how could you do tax right when your book is wrong, right? So those happens, but it's really, it, there are ways to, uh, to avoid it. So now let me tell you what are the things to avoid. Number one is to e-file your return anything and if there is something government gave you to fill out it's always e-filing will reduce the chance to be audited because the machine does the work not a human so your name and your income not gonna cost someone go i don't think jose should have so much income it's not gonna happen because it's a machine Okay, so e-filing is definitely a way to go to be, to lessen the chance to be audited. Also, e-filing verifies your simple math. Let's say you did something wrong and your social security number, you typed it one number wrong with your name, the e-filing will catch that because it already doing some basic uh, verification. 
And if the, 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 other, uh, the other way we tell people that to avoid audit, you file extension. You file extension to avoid audit. Let me tell you, there's two folds of reason behind it. Number one, not because if you extend it, it's the government just, just don't audit you, no. When you extended your taxes and you have a better ways to match your data with the IRS data, because when you file extension, you got more time to yourself, then, you know, our firm, we actually does data match for people. So we, we will already be, we will have time to go back to the government system to really look at what's not matching, what's matching. Right, so the government system need time to get ready. It's not like they just gonna be ready automatically, right? So you, if you don't file extension, the government system also don't have enough time to catch up. So extension is kind of extending for you and it's also extending for the government. So that's number one. Number two, when you file extension, that actually will group your uh, taxes into a separate, um, separate bucket. So when there is a compliance requirement, sometimes the, the data was coming out of the main bucket and the extended bucket is not even done yet. So it's sort of not really getting missed, but at least getting pushed to next year. So there is a timing for audit difference in the extended file versus regular file. The extended file and knowing that if you get audited by IRS, as long as it's not a criminal investigation, you always have just three years, right? Statutory limitation. You only have three years for them to look at. So let's say uh, right now we just finished 2019. So IRS is, uh, is actually in the hurry to audit your 2016. Then probably it's already late because if you file your 2016 on uh, April 15, they're already late. But if you extended it and then they actually have your 16, 17 and 18. So they only have three years time to really work on auditing your tax return. And do real accounting, not your notepad. And then not something you write to your tax preparer. Well, my Costco goes sold 5 million and my meals and entertainment 100. So your number need to be a number that doesn't look so fake, right? So why, you know, you probably hear people saying that, oh, don't, don't use a zero zero number, put some points in there. Why are they saying that? Actually, what they meant to say is you track your real data because your real data really not only give you comfort and also look real to IRS as well. Okay, and so use real accounting system. And now you're gonna say that, well, what do you mean by real accounting system? Real accounting system is with a check inside. That means not the check you write, with the check in debit and credit. So and when you use accounting system, your computer, make sure that you don't just do a one leg entry. The computer will make sure that it's balanced. You want to write a hundred dollar check? The computer no would would send that check to uh, your vendor, but the other leg they will reduce your bank, or they will actually increase your your equity. So whichever way you paid it. So the computer knows. Use real accounting system. That's really important. I will tell you that every audit, every audit by IRS, they require general ledger. And what is general ledger? General ledger is debit and credit, okay? And tax structure, that's my other point on the slide. Tax structure, why that is important. And I mean, tax structure simplifies your business. So if you have a Schedule C and the business is so big and you're already making 6 million sales on there, you're still on Schedule C, are you not? And you need to take yourself out and set up a proper company. And why don't you know how to set up the company? And why don't you just call community CPA? We can optimize your structure. And do you know that our in our system, their tax rate all the way from 39.5 to zero. And do you like to pay 0% or you like to always pay 39.5? 
So maybe you are saying, of course I want to pay zero. Then of course you need to consider tax structure. Okay, and this is not a webinar that I'm going to dive into that, but I do have those presentation and you want to go to YouTube, go to YouTube and check community CPA, subscribe to it. And every time we have webinar come out, you get a notification. We do these webinars all the time. And if you think knowledge here is cool and there's more to come, so you will learn a lot. Trust me, the only good business person is a good accountant. I know many, many business owners, they are not only entrepreneurs, they're good accountant. Of, of course, they choose not to do accounting work, but doesn't mean they're not good accountant. They make us do the work, but they are good accountant, okay? And that is a key to do a good tax return, to stay away from being audited data match and join audit prevention program and community cpa we have audit prevention program we never file somebody's extension saying that oh we don't have time and then you you come too late let me file extension so i can do it later no when you come in if you want to file your tax on time we do it but we also tell you that there is an audit prevention program we offer. You file extension, you do that. If you want to not to be audited, the best way to do. Trust me, it is the best way. Tax planning. And tax planning is another one. And if you are the person who are last minute person, procrastinator, and you are just like, spontaneously do things and you don't like to plan anything and just talk to yourself and start to change that and the 2020 my very last slides is about 2020 tax planning if you don't do tax plan any other year fine but if you don't do tax planning in 2020 you are not silly silly is being nice you are stupid you should because that PPP money, do you know that PPP money actually increases your tax? Yeah, did you hear me right? The PPP money you got, you cannot expense the PPP money. The PPP paid your salary for 2.5 months. The PPP paid your utility. You got a $200,000 PPP. Your expense just disappeared with two hundred thousand dollars so even if you're sitting here goes i didn't make money oh no you made it two hundred thousand dollars so you would end up paying taxes on that if you don't plan okay and the working with professionals need needless to say at least listen to our webinars right you don't have to work with us but you want to listen to our webinar take a note and go back to the person who does your tax return quiz them do you know this do you know this do you know this if they answer no to you turn around come to community cpa if they answer yes to you tell ask them did you work with community cpa before they must tell you that oh yes i used to work there um all right how do i know i got audited right isn't that an interesting question and the reason i put it in here because and uh, my dear folks they got audited, they didn't even know. Or they didn't get audited, they got the spam call and they were so scared and they couldn't sleep. They called me four o'clock in the morning and I have to figure out, and uh, you know, I, I can figure out just by the accent, I already know it's a spam. So, but anyway, so how do you know? Number one, you will receive a notice. The notice will say that, look, we found the difference and this is what it is and show us the proof. That is called correspondence audit and the less invasive and you don't know who the other person is. Normally you send this letter out and you prepare your document and done correspondence audit. And if you have to be audited, pray for this one. This is the easiest one. The second one, and it's what we call compliance audit. You got a letter from IRS and the letter says, the letter has a date and time, eight o'clock meet in this office and they're asking you to go. 
and they're asking your body to be in the office. So that is called compliance, uh, compliance audit, but just so you know that your body don't have to be there. You don't have to be there. You can hire representative to go in. And who can be your representative? Your CPA, us, lawyer, and um, I actually don't know whether you can hire your mom to go there for you. Probably mom is not a good idea. And so just let's just leave it for yourself. So your body goes in and or your CPA or your attorney. How's that? Right? So that way you don't have to go, they can go. But it is a compliance audit. Normally, it, you will be there for the first time, two hours time, they will ask you all kind of prep questions. And one interesting thing is that, you know, uh, this, is, this is a very typical question. The auditors really like to hear you say things. Okay, so you, you, you know, because you don't want to pay taxes, so a lot of people goes into the auditor's office will cry about how difficult their life is. So they're business owners and they didn't make money, so they know that they cannot have a lot of, they, if they show up with, with a lot of money, that would not be right. So they go in, they cry, they say, oh, you know, I, you know, I don't, uh, I don't have money. I never really take vacations. And I, uh, you know, I just work all the time. And, you know, I couldn't even send my kids to daycare. And I have my mother, I have my mother-in-law taking care of my kids so I can work. And, uh, you know, uh, you give so much information. So later on, during the audit, the auditor would say, well, um, you know, I remember you said your mother was living with you, taking care of your children. Oh, yes, yes, I said that. And uh, so, you know, based on that, you had like two, your, your husband and wife, your kid and a mom, you have four people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you also said that you work so hard and you, um, you, you know, you're the kind of person that uh, really like to take care of yourself and you work hard. So you don't, you, you never borrow money from anybody and you're self-sufficient and, you know, so you should at least make $40,000 a year according to the statistics we have uh, with a normal life. But you, you said that you lose 40,000. How did you live your life? And uh, then you will quickly, you know, then those, those people doesn't know how to come up with the answer. And so every question the auditor asks you, it is already prepared for estimate your lifestyle and know where your money come from and know how you uh, would how would how would you operate the business? And if you say that, well, I am so I'm my business is so bad. I don't really hire anybody. I just hire. I just have my parents going in there to work, and then yeah, the, your parents' information will be pulled out by the by the auditor. They don't have to tell you, and then they can look at their income to see whether they have anything, whether it looks like they actually work for you, and uh, where is the payment to go to the parents. Right, so all of these things, the questions are none, none of the questions the auditor asks you is for a friendship visit. I just want to leave that there. And if you happen to come back from the auditor and you know, so excited, oh, the auditor is so good, we had such a good meeting, and um, good luck. And I really hope that's the case. But if it is not that case, and later on you tell me how not so, and I am not surprised. So that's what that's where you need to um, you need to consider whether you are the one going to the auditor or you have representative to go because you do not want to go first after you answered all the questions silly and wrong and then you send your representative to go and it's not good because the IRS already have your answer they are not going to go with your representative's answer okay and then IRS will never surprise you. Remember, they will never do something like marching to your home, start knocking your door. Hey, IRS, well, of course, if you're a drug dealer, expect that. But if you are a normal citizen and doing business properly, that should never happen. You should got the letter. And the third kind of audit is field audit. 
Field audit just means that you get a letter. The appointment is not in the IRS building, it's in your business or at your home. And imagine if you claim if you claim the home office, the IRS do have a right to come to your home because they can visit your home office, measure it and decide whether your claim is reasonable or not. So those are the things, um, you know, uh, those are the three kind of audit the IRS ha has. Of course, criminal investigation is very different. It's not like I have a huge amount of experience dealing with criminal investigations, but I have been on both sides of the criminal investigations and being in the court to uh, to be the expert, win uh, expert you know, witness explain how the the how the the rules is all about and for the IRA, for um for the taxpayers uh, return and i also on the other side and to help the attorneys to um uh, to uh, you know to fight to to help the government and to fight whoever on the other side so um i have done both but you know generally speaking and you should never be surprised it should come uh, slowly, and those cases last long time. If you t if you ask me, okay, Ying, if I get IRS audited and on the field audit, how long normally that audit takes? I would say that intensive uh, back and forth would only be about three months time. So it would be a lot of asking this and that the IRS want you to do, and then you will get back to them in three months time, and that is most of the things already done. Then the rest of it is IRS draw conclusion. Then you, you go back to counter what they do or you go to appeals. So overall, our average, we do a lot of audit here. So if you ask my experience, my, my average of time to finish one case is two years. So that is um, how long the IRS audit would last. Of course, between the government regulatory bodies, they actually transfer files. So if you get audited by IRS and they could refer you to Department of, Department of Labor, if you audit by Department of Labor, they can go to IRS. So governmental inside, they do transfer. And um, the state to federal, I have not seen a lot, but the federal result of the audit always goes to the state and the trigger state to further audit. And the state audit, and frankly speaking, for my 25 years experience, the state audit are not consistent. Some of them went to the federal, some didn't. So I guess it depends on uh, how that auditor do for your case. And now let's understand rights, because I think it's very important for you to know when you get audited by IRS, what kind of rights you have. This is actually sent to you when they audit you. You get this paper. It shows you what right you have. But our folks are just so panicking. They are panicked. They, they don't read anything. They just like brought the right to me. And then I will say that, whoa, these are the right. Do you know you're right? And so let's just quickly go through them. I give you an example of each one so it's not dry. So right to be informed. Okay. What that mean? That means that you could ask IRS, why am I getting audited? They should, they should tell you. They may say, well, we had a special project. All of the 10, 1065 or this type of return are being selected. So you were randomly selected. Or they will say, well, there's our items doesn't, you did not report. So that was routed over for report. Or they will say, well, we had other, we have information come forward, a uh, warrant this audit. So they will tell you, okay, right to be informed, right to quality service, which means that the, the, the auditor at IRS who work with you, their work should, should have quality. Let's say, uh, this is a real example. I'm not making it up. And I had one time, the auditors are actually coming to uh, audit one of the clients that we work with. And their paper came out and saying that client owes like over 
800,000 on taxes. And it is not possible because their sales is not even 800,000. So what happened is the auditor actually did a typo. 111,000 sales, the auditor was having it as a 1,111,000 sales. Then of course, everything went banana. And uh, But in the beginning, nobody even realized why that happened. So that's a quality of work that IRS should provide and that should not happen. So just so you know that you deserve a quality of service. So their calculation, their work, and it should make you feel that it is done properly. And the right to pay no more than correct amount of taxes. See, this is to say that IRS don't want tips. Okay, IRS want to be paid for what you owe, but paying tips is not encouraged. And so this is your right to not pay tips. But I'm telling you, if you ask me, our small businesses always pay more taxes. Not because, not because anything else, because they don't know the rules. And do you know that in 2020, the CARES, uh, the CARES Act came out and it made changes to 2019. Did your tax preparer tell you that your 2019 had already reflected 2020's tax change? Did they tell that you, to you? If they didn't, they didn't do that job. I mean, you should not be filing your 2019 without incorporating 2020 changes because that saves you money. And we, I have one client and I did tax planning for him in October of 2019. That time, nobody knows COVID yet. So I did regularly based on the rule that, based on the Tax Act of 2018, Job Act. And then now uh, this, you know, this coming, I just finished the tax return in July and I implemented 2020 CARES Act. And instead of them paying $31,000 taxes, with that change, they're not only not paying anything, they're getting 21 plus 18, 30, $41,000 refund. Okay, so that is the difference. So again, it is what you need to know. You need to know the rules in order to not to pay tips. And so some of our small business, all they know is to not reporting all the sales. So they think they win something, but they lose more. So I always tell our folks that you need to respect the, the regulations out there, report all your sales and do your accounting properly. That way you make it and you keep it forever. But if you're not doing it right, you make it, but you don't keep it forever because once you get audited, you return it all back. Okay, so it's really uh, my advice. I, I'm in business for 25 years and I see more than 9,000 uh, businesses in our firm. I'm telling you what I say. It is really sincere and I, uh, English is my second language, so I don't know how to beat around the bushes. I only just tell you the truth, okay? And the right to challenge IRS's position and be heard. Look at that. You can say, I do not agree. So when you work with the auditors and, um, you know, for God's sake, if you meet with the auditors who are already super jealous of what you are making and they're not doing very well for you and you can demand to go to um to go to go higher to go to different places to do that okay and then right to appeal a irs decision in the independent form so you can appeal we do appeal all the time and right to uh, uh finality finality is Taxpayers have the right to know the maximum amount of time allowed to challenge IRS position. So you will not be kept in the dark. And you can say to them that, how long do I have to, um, to challenge your position? So they have to tell you. The right to privacy, IRS cannot tell anybody about, uh, about your audit. So sometimes you're applying for a job. Okay, say you apply for a job, but you're being audited. As long audit is not finalized yet, and that is not a sure thing. So there's no need to tell people that I am being audited and I can, you know, uh, I am afraid 
uh, this is a criminal things that so you I need to report. No, being audited is not criminal at all. Being audited is just a compliance check by IRS. So as long as it's not finished, you don't need to tell anybody and the IRS will not pub publicize your being audited. IRS didn't say Donald Trump getting audited, right? So, you know, if somebody else said that, IRS didn't. The right to confidentiality, that's the one. The right to retain representative, yes. You have a right to hire us to represent you. Hire someone good, okay? The right to fair and just tax system. And that is our right. That is the, uh, the panel I'm on. And to make sure that you have the right to, uh, you, you are being treated fairly. And, uh, you know, what to do if you get audited? Um, you should, the number one thing that you should know why you get audited, and maybe you filed an amend, amended return for a large refund, maybe you forgot another W-2, maybe you have a Schedule C business on your return. When IRS began a special project, you fit into the, their scope then you could be audited and decide on who to represent you and to start working on your paperwork. That's really, really important. And here, I want to show you something. This is the IRS paperwork. IRS give you this C, it's called the information document request. And uh, so in here, we call this IDR, IDR. And so the IDR is a list of document IRS want from you because they want to audit you properly. So, but look at this. If you are a QuickBook user, you have a lot of work to do because you need to get your QuickBook ready. And IRS want your administrative username password for the QuickBook, okay? QuickBook has everything you do in there. If you are audited for 2014, and um, you know, in this case, the taxpayer got audited for 2014. You can see it right there. But I tell you, and when you give the QuickBook, there's no way you can give just one year. So you are literally giving more years. So in this case, this taxpayer was audited 14, 15, 16, because they cannot separate the QuickBook. And that is one thing I just need you to know. So now when you prepare for your audit, before you give the username password, I think it's probably a good idea to look at what you have in the QuickBook. Am I right? Right? All right, this is my last slide. And so here I say, now you know what triggers audit. Now you know when audit happens and how do you know you're being audited. And once you're being audited, what kind of rights you have, what things you're doing. And then my last comment to you is that 2020 is very special. 2020 is unlike any other years. And if you have a big loss in 2020, which a lot of people will, and let me tell you, don't go file bankruptcy until you finish your 2020 tax return because the loss you have and you can go back to prior year to get tax refund back. I'm just going to leave it as simple as that because this is one of the 16 tax incentives in CARES Act. And in case you don't know, I just want you to hear what I'm saying. You, you cannot, don't. Just because your 2020 is not so good, you're planning, you're doing bankruptcy, because once you file bankruptcy, you cannot go back to get the money back. You cannot do that anymore. So make sure you file your taxes, get your money back first. So here I say that, you know, as long as you receive government help, these are the things you want to consider when you do tax, uh, when you do tax planning. And um, your business receive government assistance, you need to do tax planning. And your stock went from a positive number to a negative number, you need to do tax planning. And you start a new business, planning. Business changed the way it was, and now the old structure doesn't fit, time to plan. And you borrow money from SBA, boy, that has a whole that has a whole set of regulation you need to follow. And you, you bought Mercedes from, uh, you know, uh, you bought a merchandise, you, Mercedes, you bought a merchandise from other country, um, you know, with COVID-19, it was stopped at the port and it never arrived. You are in litigation and you need to write down your losses. You need to plan. And with all of these, um, 
information changes, government changes, and you want to, you, you, you just want to give up. You want to pass your business to your children and you want to walk away. You want to file bankruptcy, whatever you were thinking. And you want to plan your 2020 tax first before you consider next stop. And some people are saying that I'm divorced in 2020. Oh man, that is another reason to do tax planning. So our, in our firm, October and November are our tax planning month. And uh, you want to give us time to, to take you in. So make sure you contact us if you are interested in our service. And in any case, even if you are not wanting to hire anybody yet, make sure you hire yourself at a higher level and give yourself more time to study and learn from our webinar, if it is nothing else, and really gain that knowledge.